Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Pav and today I'm going to let you in on how I record audio at weddings. So I've broken it down into two videos with the first one focusing on audio from the ceremony and the second one focusing on audio from the speeches. So let's get into it. So I know that um, there are a lot of options out there. There's um, for recording audio. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. I'm just going to run through the ways that I do it for certain parts of the day. So the first part is um, obviously it's, it's going to be the ceremony. So the person that I always mic up at the ceremony is the groom. The groom will always have a jacket on. Well, most of the time they'll always have a jacket on. They'll have some way for me to put a lavalier mic on them. So the mic that I currently use is um, this mic here. It's a Tascam DR10L. So I've got three reasons why I really, really like this mic here, Tascam DR10L. First reason is the, the mic that it comes with. Uh, it screws in, so that's fine, perfect. It literally, you can wave it around, whatever. Like, it, there's no way that that mic will come out, which is brilliant because you know you put it on the groom and you don't. They sit down or whatever could happen. You're just happy, safe in the knowledge that that mic is not going to come out of the socket. Whereas before, I used to use this Zoom H1 with the mic, and that can come out pretty easily. So. Happy I don't have to use that system anymore. Uh, the second reason is it records uh, two, two different tracks, uh, two different levels. So one would be the level that you set it for. And the second is either a minus 6 dB or minus 12 dB lower level. And that is just so, so good. It just removes the, any possibility of any distortion, clipping. I've never had any like this mic clip on me ever now just because I can use I've got that safety track now so it's fine also um, because you're going to have this mic on and this is going to be the mic that picks up the bride's vocal as well having those two separate tracks means that you can use the the high level or the level that you set it for for the bride who's going to be a little bit further away um, so it's going to pick up their voice clearer and then the lower level can be for the groom and you can match the levels easier than when you used to just have the one level and the third reason is just for the size and the weight because it is so so tiny like you just got absolutely pro actually kind of fourth reason as well is it comes with this clip because this h1 didn't have any clips so you're pretty much relying on it going into a pocket whereas this if um, there's no jacket like say for a, a hindu groom uh, they don't really wear jackets they wear more of a one piece um, overall so this can clip onto the back come up through there and clip on there um, so that's kind of like the fourth reason so yeah going back to the third reason uh, is the size it's just tiny it's so light and no one can basically say no i'm not wearing that because it, yeah it's just not even like it's on you sometimes i used to use just as a side note i used to use um the rode wireless kit lav kit and I used that for like a wedding season on the groom so that I could, you know, try and be like as professional as possible and listen to the levels and stuff. I would say don't do that. It's just not really practical. Like you've got so many other things to think about on the wedding day, standing there monitoring sound levels and increasing the level when the bride talks and that kind of stuff. I've never had any problem, to be honest, with any interference, like with the wireless system, like that's not even an issue. It's just the fact that I just don't see the point because this just continually records as long as the battery is there. Another thing with this one as well, just quickly, is um, I actually use auto level instead of actually putting a level in, which some people might be like just, I don't know, switching off right now or spitting at the screen or whatever. But yeah, like I, I used to think the same. I used to think like oh, auto level, that's a bit amateur. That's going to increase the noise when somebody's not talking or whatever so like but actually testing it out like no not really like i tested it out before a wedding and it's actually fine like especially when you've got a music track that's kind of underlaying the 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 sound which i pretty much always have in my wedding films there's you can't tell like this you know the, the sound going up and down is it's fine again it's another thing that you don't need to worry about is the fact that you can put it on auto level have a minus 6 db or minus 12 db plus a normal track um this doesn't un you know doesn't unscrew I'm, i know i'm kind of rambling on a bit about this now and making it in, almost into a review video but it's just 
which is great. I've got three of these now and um, yeah, brilliant. So another little bonus tip just for this, when you're putting any kind of lav on, is to have this on the left side of the groom. So if you have it on this side, because when the bride comes and um, if there's any, and they're both speaking towards the officiant, when they're facing each other, it's cool, it's fine, like it doesn't really matter um, which side you have it on. But when there's speaking going on forwards, if it's, if you put it on this side, of the the groom that's a little bit further away from the bride the bride's going to be on this side so have it make sure you always put it on this side just because she's a bit closer so it's going to pick up her her sound so the other person that i mic up at the ceremony is the officiant again i will try to do the same thing and put one of these on because the sound quality is good and tiny whatever you know all that stuff so that i mentioned before all the advantages so i will suggest to them do you mind if i put that on Sometimes it's not possible for me to do that. Um, if it's, say it's a lady wearing a dress and there's no way for me to clip it on or there's no time. If there's just no way for me physically like to be able to get one of these on or another reason why I might not use it is I might just not have enough time because say it's a quick civil ceremony where the registrar comes in five minutes before quickly after doing her interviews and stuff with the bride and groom if they just come in and I don't have the time. That's when I use one of these things here. It's a Sony TX650. Big, big, big advantage of this is it is, again, it's small light and it's just got this little clip on here. So basically, this is just fantastic because you can just say to the guy, person, whoever you want to put it on, look, can you just clip it on there like that? And it's like, you can clip it on anything, like any kind of dress, even if the dress is a bit complicated and there's just like a strap, put that on the strap almost tuck it in like that there's pretty much always a way to get this on i found so that's why it's brilliant the audio quality is not as good as a lav mic that's the only downside but it's still okay it's still like acceptable and it's still close to the source close to the mouth in all seriousness actually the thing that probably came out most um for my friends was probably the same things i would say about sophie um she's a fiercely loyal friend and i mean fierce um absolutely passionate as well um, fun to be around and actually one of like the most probably powerful stories I saw was actually about some of like, the life-changing experiences people can have with Sophie in some single one-on-one -on -one time. A lot of the time I find myself pulling this out for the officiant. Um, sometimes they might be a bit too intimidated by having a mic on them or they might say oh look I've already got another mic on me and then you try to convince them that look that mic's projecting sound this one is to record sound for the video but they they might just get confused and say no it's fine it's fine in that case you can just say look, look okay in, in any case can you just quickly clip that on like how can they say no to that so another point in the ceremony when you probably want to be recording audio is for the readings so for a civil ceremony in the UK especially um, there'll be a maximum I've never seen more than two readings, um, in which case I just find out who's giving the readings and put one of these on each of the people giving readings. Yeah, just, just press, uh, press the record button on, leave it on hold, put it on them, take it off them at the end of the ceremony. That's done. If it's a longer ceremony, a religious ceremony, say in a church, there more than likely will be a podium where people will go up and stand and there could be in that case three or four different readings. If it's a podium with a microphone on, I'll try to put something like this up there or one of the Tascam DR10Ls and just wrap this lav around the, the mic that faces up. Um, normally people, they can't even detect it, but yeah, so it's there and that will get good quality audio because the labs are always better. Um, if it's a podium that doesn't have the, the mic sticking out, then I might just put this Tascam on the, on the mic, um, on the podium itself. Um, just with a little bit of tape um, because I've had it before where someone's knocked it off So yeah, just either put like a little bit of velcro underneath and stick it on or a little bit of gaff tape Gaffer tape, which you, you should always have on you anyway gaff tape because it's very handy And um, one other source of audio that I'll try to sneak in if I can is plugging in my um, Zoom H5 um, Into PA system there or sometimes at some religious ceremonies like some churches they have especially the newer churches They have sound technicians there um, which is easy as anything because they're usually so so nice and you just say to them oh do you mind if i just plug in my my h5 into your into your soundboard um just to get a feed from them and then that's another source but that's i would say that's a bonus doesn't happen very often and um, it's not something that i would prioritize if i do 
see a sound guy there, then I will chat to them about it. If I don't, I won't go running around looking for a PA system because especially in older churches and stuff, they're not even that good, to be honest, like the sound quality that you get from them because they're quite old. So I would usually just focus my attention on getting individual lab mics or sound recorders on people. And then that's just a, a bonus source. That's it, that's how I record audio at ceremonies. Uh, like I said, there'll be a second video where I talk about how I record the audio at, during the speeches of a wedding day. If you found this video helpful in any way, please consider giving it a like. That would be a great help to me. And also, if you wanted to know anything else, just leave a comment down below and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.